Good morning. It's the Lord's Day, and it's August 23rd of 2020. I do believe that that was my father's birthday, so I remember him today. He was a blessing to me. And today we are talking about blessings and have been talking about blessings all week. And I would like to read the text, which is a great text for you to memorize because it's a good text to read and to think about when times are tough and when our emotions aren't working right and when we're just kind of down. It says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. So as we look at blessings, I'd like to speak first of the seriousness of blessings. Are blessings for real, or are they just a form of greeting or expression? Bless your soul. Well, God bless you. And you hear that kind of flowery language, and it doesn't fly too well in the church today. Is it just a form of expression or is there power in blessing? Let us look at our Bible study for today. And I did a little bit of study just in the book of Genesis. And in Genesis 1, we see God <clears throat> blessed all the fish of the sea or uh, created them. And then he said, God bless them, be fruitful and multiply. And then in verse 28, the same with the birds. He blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. And then in chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, God blessed the seventh day, the day of rest, and made it holy. Now, it's interesting, making it holy is sanctifying and making it special, but God blessed the day. In Genesis 12, we have the Abrahamic covenant, <clears throat> which is full of blessing. The Lord said to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred in your father's house to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. And... I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, does that say that God will sit in heaven and say, oh, bless my soul, they're being good to Abraham, and then when he looks over and sees someone hurting Abraham, is he going to say, oh, do you think that's what it means? Or does it mean something more serious, that when God blesses, there's something serious happening? If we look in Genesis 14, we see the account where, Genesis, where uh, Abraham went and rescued Lot from the kings. And many of the kings fell in tar pits in the battle, and Abraham was the winner and took the spoils. <clears throat> and Abraham met this character, one of the most interesting and unknown characters of the Bible, named Melchizedek, king of peace. And he brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of the God Most High. He blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham by the God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies in his hand. And the Bible says Abraham tithed and gave him a tenth of it all. The next account of blessing is probably one of the more serious ones. It's always made me think. <clears throat> this is the account of Isaac and Jacob, where Jacob and his brother Esau, Jacob deceived his father while his brother was hunting in the field. And he dressed and put smells on like he, so he could smell like Esau because Jacob was blind <clears throat> and then asked for his blessing. And <clears throat> Isaac blessed him 
and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. May God give you the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth, the plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and may your mother's sons bow to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be everyone who blesses you. Now, when the brother came in from the field and found out <clears throat> that his blessing was stolen, he was angry and wanted to kill him. It was more than just approval, the father's approval. It was the father bestowing blessing. And, you know, I don't understand all of this, but I believe in my heart that somehow God has given a power to fathers to bless their children or curse them. And I have even dealt with situations where fathers in foolishness and anger said terrible things to their children. And I tell you, it's like prophecy coming true because you can actually put a curse that this devil will acknowledge and work on. And a father can put a blessing on his child that God will acknowledge and work on. In the spiritual realm, in that world beyond what we see, a world of angels and demons and spiritual warfare, blessings and cursings are powerful. So I came to this conclusion. When God blesses, it means he has determined to bestow grace and power on the one he blesses. So when God says it, it's something that's going to happen. When we bless <clears throat> someone, it means we have expressed our hope and intentions that God will uh, genuinely bestow grace and power. And there may be a bit of uh, exclusion to that. Perhaps God has given the Father the right and the power to bless his children in a special way. And then lastly, I'd like to say, when we genuinely bless other people, we're acting like our Heavenly Father and expressing loving intentions before them. So I'm asking you, do we in this day have a lifestyle of blessing like they did years ago? Or do we just use it as a form of greeting and not really give blessings like we ought? Now, if we look in our text today, we have the supply of blessing. Notice the word has. Most of the doctrinal errors that I have met in my lifetime have had to do with people who think they need a new blessing. But the fact of the matter is, is that our blessings have been provided. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, God has blessed us. It's past. It's already done. Most of it happened on the cross. In Romans 6.6, 6, it says, Our old self was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. <clears throat> this all happened on the cross. And Ephesians 2.6 talks about Jesus. When he went to heaven, it says, We are seated with him on the right hand of God. So the issue of blessing is discovering the, ga the grace that God has already provided. Faith is a key, blessings are gifts, and some blessings we grow into as we grow in grace and faithfulness and truth. And what about claiming blessings? Well, I believe it's about faith and positioning. Are you blessable? You know, we look in the scripture and the Beatitudes that talk about how to be blessed. It talks about being blessed if you're holy, being blessed if you're persecuted, which means you stand for the Lord, being blessed if you seek righteousness, being blessed if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, being blessed if you're a peacemaker. This is all obedience. Now, I've heard people and I've read books that talk about name it and claim it. It's yours. You just name it and claim it and speak it into power. 
I really don't think that I see that in God's word. I think God can claim it and speak it into power. I think sometimes God has given the authority to some men to do it. But I think for the most of us, when we bless someone, we are giving our intentions and a a prayer that God will bless them. But at the same time, we become blessable through obedience and holiness. Now then I'd like to speak about the scope of blessing. In our text, it says we have been blessed by every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. There are four things that talk about the scope of our blessing. Number one, every. We are not denied anything. Every spiritual blessing is ours. Secondly, it's a spiritual blessing. After all, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. After all, this physical world will pass away, and it's a spiritual world to which we go. After all, you can't take the blessings of this world with you. You need to build the treasure chest full of spiritual blessings, and God has given all those spiritual blessings to us. And then the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. We could be talking about heaven in the future, the streets of gold, the the gem-filled foundations, the jasper walls. We could be talking about that. The pearly gates. We could be talking about the river of life and the trees on each side. Or we also could be talking about the fact that God has ruled from heaven for eternity and the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places mean that these blessings have been secured from before the foundations of the earth. And then in Christ, guess what? The spiritual blessings aren't yours unless you are in Christ. You have to come to the point where you say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. Come into my heart and be my savior. You have to know that the Holy Spirit has come into your heart, that you've been justified in the courts of heaven, and that God has caused you to be born again, and know that you are in Christ. And if you are in Christ, then all these blessings are yours. So the scope of blessing is every, you have all of them, they're spiritual, they're in the heavenly places, and they are in Christ. Then what is the style of blessing? What is your style? Notice it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is blessing God. How do you bless God when he has everything and you have nothing? Well, what you're saying is it's my intentions because God is so good to me. I want to be good to God. I want to give him everything I have. So what is your style? I've met people whose style is criticism. Everywhere they go, there's something wrong, and they're going to expose what's wrong. They're going to prove what's wrong. Is that your style? I've known people who... Their style is silence. They give no encouragement to anyone. In fact, I had a relative who, if you were wrong or if you did poorly, they wanted you to know so you could correct it. If you did well, you got silence. That wasn't the greatest system. What about your style? Do you have a generous style or a not generous style? Are you generous to say good things to people? Are you generous to encourage people? Are you generous to see people as special in the eyes of God? Or do you have a style of blessing? I'm not talking about some sappy Christian person who says, well, land sakes, I hope you're sure blessed. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a sincere, genuine blessing of people. Well, it's time for change. 
It's time for you to start generous expressions. Time for you to start thinking about something other than your own pain and your own sorrow and suffering. And look at other people and say, what could I do to be a blessing to them? What could I do to encourage their heart? What could I do to make them walk away and feel that they've been genuinely blessed because they've met me because I'm a child of God? It's called changing the thinking from your own self to someone else and desiring to bless them. And then lastly, I'd like to talk about the scheme of blessing. What is the scheme of blessing? It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Well, here's the scheme of man's existence. Why did God create man? Well, he created man to bless him. Why do you know that? Well, because it's real simple. When I had children, I want to be a blessing to my children. How about you? Do you want to be a blessing to your children? God is a father, a heavenly father, and we are his children. And he had us because he wants to bless us like every father does. We were created not only to be blessed, but to bless one another. But lastly, and probably most importantly, we were created to bless God. And that is why Paul said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you bless God? Do you have words that you speak to God and bless God in front of people or even alone? This is very contrary to the modern world of narcissism and selfishness. Almost everything about God is always contrary to the world, and this is. When I was in college, I read a book that I was required to read called The Self-Life and a Christ Life. It was a very small book. It was a very potent book. It was about sanctification, about getting rid of all of your sins and living for God. And I have thought of that book many times over the years, and yet I feel like I have kind of missed the boat on some of that. Because, yes, we can attain a certain level of purity. Yes, we can keep ourselves above the fray. But there is a sense that you're still living the self-life and not the Christ life until you do what Jesus said to the fishermen. He said, follow me. And following Jesus is a life of blessing others as Jesus did. And following Jesus is a life of blessing God. We look in the Apostle Paul, he talked about putting off the old self and putting on the new self. Well, the new self is one who blesses God. The new self is one who looks in the sky and sees a beautiful cloud and says, thank you, Lord, blessed be God for making that cloud. He is other-centered. And I'm here to tell you the scheme of blessing is, is this is man's destiny. Man was created to worship God and to bless God. And at the end of all of history, when Jesus Christ returns and all men stand before the great white throne, when it's over, those who spend eternity with God are the people who learn to bless him and worship him. And they will spend 10,000 years before the throne, singing and praising God, and it will seem but a day. In conclusion, I'd like to say God took blessing seriously. So did Jacob, so did Abraham, so did Isaac, and even Esau, who was cheated out of his blessing. Do you take blessing seriously? Blessing is our destiny. We were created to bless and to be blessed and to bless others. 
Therefore, I think we have a need in our lives to focus on blessing. Not to focus on what blessings we can receive, like some of those name it, claim it people, but to focus on growing in grace, being a blessing to God, and verbally blessing God with our heart and our lives. And that is the destiny and the purpose of your life. It is the will of God for you. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, this is a hard subject and a subject we don't speak about often. We all desire to be blessed and we want God to bless us. People come who have no sense of godliness, but they want the blessing of the church when they get married. Some people want a blessing upon their children when they're born. Some people want a blessing when a death comes to their family. But in all of this, are we going to ever come to the place where we bless our God and love him as we ought? Lord, work in our hearts today in Jesus' name. Amen.